What are the 10 most popular plumbing questions? I'm gonna answer those questions for you and hopefully it'll help you save money if you're a homeowner and help you out and help you make more money if you're a plumber or you own a plumbing company. Number one is why does my toilet keep running? Now this as a homeowner is something you can fix relatively easy. There may be things that you get into where you need to call a plumber, but I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you might be able to do yourself to help save you some money. So normally, if you've got a toilet that's running, chances are it's just the flapper right down here on the bottom. Now there's some different things that you can do. If you normally go in and jiggle the handle, see how it pulls up the flapper right there? If that normally makes it quit, that tells you this is probably where your problem is. Now, the flappers are really easy to change. We've got a whole nother video about that, but like this one, unsnaps and you snap the new one right back in. Now, it could also be the flush valve, which is what this flapper sets down on. That's a little bit more intricate, but it's something that I think you could still do if you watch the video, and of course, yes, we've made a video for that. Now, your fill valve could also be stuck. If you need to replace this, make sure you remember, shut off the angle stop, flush the toilet to get all the water out, and then you're in a good position to change that out. Look, I've got video showing how to do all this. I'm not gonna do that right now, but today I wanna answer these questions for you. Take your lid off your tank, look down in there, and you may be able to figure out what your problem is. Number two, why do we run out of hot water? Well, now this is my electric water heater, but I'm gonna spin it around here so you can see inside. Different reasons that you can run out. Number one, if you've got a very old water heater, it could have calcium and magnesium sediment built up in the bottom of it. Now, in an electric water heater, it'll also build up on the heating elements. Now, you could have a thermostat out. There's different reasons, but if you've got an older water heater and you have not flushed it every year, chances are you've got sediment built up in the bottom of it. And if that water heater is more than four years old, I probably wouldn't start flushing it now. That sediment could actually be filling little bitty micro cracks in it and keeping them from leaking. So when you do get a new water heater in the very beginning, man, start writing on it. Every year when you flush it, put the date on there. When you walk by and see it, that'll remind you. That can be a big reason that you're running out of hot water. The sediment gives you less efficiency, less hot water. The heating elements, the more they get corroded, the more they get covered up, the less efficient they are. And maybe your dip tube got too hot, melted, dropped down, or if from the very beginning upon moving into your house, you didn't have a lot of hot water, maybe the plumber made a solder joint up here on the top melted your dip tube and let it drop down. These are things that can happen. Most of these things can be repaired if one of your thermostats, now your thermostat is right on the outside of the water heater here up under your panel and it tells your heating element when to kick on and when not to. If one of them is out, you're also gonna run out of hot water a whole lot faster. And also, if you do have an electric water heater, remember, you've got a reset button on those thermostats. You may be able to just open the panel up, press that button, and go from there. But be careful, you're dealing with electricity. Make sure you take care of yourself very well. Number three, can I use chemical drain cleaners? Well, we don't recommend it. Chemical drain cleaners are very toxic. And when you put them in, you can mess up the finishes inside of your sink on your chrome, anything like that. But one of the other bad things is you can actually start deteriorating your pipes from the inside. What we recommend is putting a bucket down under your P-trap and then take the P-trap apart. Now, it's not connected here in the back, but when you disconnect this P-trap, you undo it on both sides. Now, put a bucket, put a pan, put something underneath it. Loosen everything up, then when you take it apart, if the clog is not back in the wall, it's normally right here. This is something most homeowners can take apart fairly easy, but if you've got a bunch of water in the sink, you may wanna get a cup, you may wanna get something to scoop some of that out. We do not recommend chemical drain cleaners. The reason being, you never know when your kids are gonna come in and see it and think it's okay to play with. If they get something in their eye, you could damage them very, very easily. So make sure you don't use chemical drain cleaners. Number four. Why is my water heater really high lately? Well, it could be some different reasons. Number one, they may have installed a new meter. If you've got an old meter or you had an old meter and they pulled it out and they installed a new meter, 
It could actually be reading how much water you're really using, and it could be more than you think. But if you hadn't had anything like that, the first thing to check is your toilets. Remember earlier we talked about the running toilet? Check your toilets, check your faucets. You'd be surprised how many parents go into their child's bathroom and realize the faucet's dripping and they didn't even know. That can cost you a lot of money. Now, if it's not one of those two things, it could be a slab leak. Now that's not a good thing. Go out and open your meter box. Look at your meter and see if that low flow indicator is moving. If it is, you could have a more serious problem. And that takes me to number five. What if you do have a serious water leak? Well, if you do, first of all, you need to know how to turn the water off to your house. Do you know how to do that? Can you go out to the meter and turn it off? Or do you have a valve box in the front yard where you can turn it off? That is one of the most important things to know. Now, if it's a big leak and you can tell where it's coming from, turn the water off either at the meter or maybe a, a toilet gets broke or something like that. There's an angle stop there. Hopefully you can turn off that angle stop and that'll shut it off and you don't have to shut the water off to the entire house. Number six, why does my drain get stopped up so often? Well. If it's a drain at a sink, what are you putting down it? If it's a garbage disposal or something like that, be careful of what you're putting down it. We don't recommend eggshells, rice, lettuce, cabbage, pasta, anything like that that could gum it up. Now, if you've got just a little bit on your plate and you wanna put it down the disposal, we understand that. Turn on hot water, let it get hot, let it run, then just put a little at a time in there. Don't dump an entire plate full of food into the disposal and let it just clog your drain. It's exactly what'll happen. Now, if it's your bathroom drain, anything else, maybe a shower, hair, soap, gels, shampoos, conditioners, anything at all like that could be gumming up your drains. Make sure that you've got a closet auger, a drain cleaner, anything that you can use for preventative maintenance to help keep you from having these problems. Number seven, why does my water heater make noise? Well, to be honest, water heaters are supposed to make some noises. You may hear hissing, you may hear different things. When your gas water heater fires up, you'll hear that flame. The heat will go up the flue pipe. You may get condensation from inside. But remember, I talked earlier about the sediment in the bottom. If it's a gas water heater, a lot of times, even if it's electric, you'll hear a hissing or on gas, you'll hear that rumbling where it's trying to heat water through all that sediment buildup in the bottom, that's gonna make noises that you hear. Number eight, why do I have a bad smell coming from my bathroom? Well, maybe you've got a guest bathroom that you don't use that often. If there's not a lot of water ran in the lavatory or in the bathtub, those P-traps could get dry and you could be getting sewer gas smell back into the room. Now, this does happen a little bit more often than you think. All you really gotta do is go in Turn the water on, and I recommend cold, just long enough to fill up the P-traps. It'll take 10 or 15 seconds. Turn it on, let it run for a second, turn it off, come back in a little bit later. What is the difference in hard water and soft water, and is hard water really bad? Well, hard water is really just the dissolved calcium and magnesium in the water, how many particles there are. And there's a numerical value to it. But soft water is not bad. Some people love it. If you love soft water and you take a shower where the water is really soft, you feel really, really silky. If you don't like soft water, you feel really, really slimy. Slimy is not a good thing. So what is it and what's bad about it and how do you know if you've got it? Well, you can test your water. You can probably get a test kit at the big box store or you may wanna call a plumber and have him come out and do a water quality test. We do those quite often. Here's the deal. If you can see powder build up like on your shower head, on your doors, on your aerators, and I just mean that white chalky powder that builds up, well, that's sediment building up. And what's happening there is if you can see it there, it may be building up in your valves, in your washing machine, in your ice maker, in your dishwasher. Hard water is not good for your plumbing system and taking care of it as early as you can think of it might save you a lot of money in the long run. Now number 10, and we've kind of addressed it earlier, what can I put down my garbage disposal? Well, let's turn around and look at what you shouldn't. And we've already mentioned a lot of it. Cabbage, lettuce, pasta, eggshells, anything at all like that. Using too much soap, using hand cleaners all the time in your kitchen sink can help clog your garbage disposal and the P-trap where the water goes through coming out. But what can you do? Well, if you're just putting a little bit down, like I said earlier, run plenty of hot water and clean that out. 
It's gonna rinse it out. You wanna have that water flow to help carry all those solids all the way down to the sewer and all the way out. Now, to be honest, I dump most of my solids into the trash can. I try not to put a lot of things in my garbage disposal. And yes, I'm a plumber. Now I've got a bonus for you, and this is one that we get asked a lot too. How do you find a good plumber? And it's funny because they call us and ask us this, maybe because of what we do on social media. But I'm not in everybody's area, I get that. What I highly recommend is doing research. What plumbers are out there that have a great reputation? What plumbers are out there that have five-star reviews? And do you have any friends that have used a plumber lately that would actually give you a good review for them? Talking about reviews, go in and check those reviews. If somebody complained about a plumbing company, how did they respond? Did they say, hey, look, I'd really like to talk and take care of this? Or did they say, you, the customer, was completely wrong, you don't know what you're talking about? Because I have seen plumbers do that, and those are plumbing companies I would never call. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money, and as a homeowner, save money in the trades.